Yo, it's Duff for the Cloud Chaser TV, man. We back up in this thing again, you dig? Hey, man, we got Big Pun in the news. Big Pun, you know, R.I.P., um, definitely a legend, you know, as well as Fat Joe. Now, this thing with Fat Joe, you know, as far as his rights uh, with the movie that they possibly be coming out with, maybe even a um, series. And um, WAC 100 saying that he bought the rights and then he gave it to the wife and that Big Pun was getting robbed by Fat Joe since he's been um, deceased, you know, and it was a whole situation, like, even with Cuban Link saying that he wasn't treated right, as well as um, Charlie Rock, and um, Fat Joe pretty much responds to all these situations, fam, if y'all haven't already, check out my interview with Cuban Link that I did a couple of days ago, it's loaded up on the channel, but um, let me get to this footage, y'all listen up. God putting his finger on there. I'm not confused. And so, find God to live in this world without God? Woo! You playing the big game. Big game. And people I that fear God. Whether you call them whatever you want to call them. Uh, and so, when you think about it bugs me out, right? Because you think about entitlement. You think about entitlement. And then in hip hop and in street culture, we have a lot of that. That's all over. If you think about rappers and their entourages, when a rapper did a miracle, 99, 9,999 out of 10,000 rappers that got some type of success. Grew up poor. So it's a miracle that God blessed him to make a hit. Now he got his crew. They say, we made it. We did this. And so they have a sense of entitlement to where they believe, yo, I was there from day. Listen. Family members. Sense of entitlement. Where they feel like, I'm your family. You got to do this. That's not how it is when every person. I've never seen somebody get born at the same side by side. You get born by yourself, butt naked in your birthday suit. And you make the best of what you can. Some people work harder than others to get it. I was thinking about the movie Creed. I went to see Creed yesterday. Phenomenal movie. Like, when I say incredible movie, and it was so emotional to me because I could really, really relate to the storyline. And anybody who's successful uh, could relate. I thought about me and my brother. You know, you guys, a lot of guys call me the best storyteller in the world. A lot of guys, Joe, you're a good guy. I could never be good or better than my brother Angel, the money man. You know, and when you see Fat Joe, I'm just a wannabe Angel, money man. And so he was the best guy, the most honest guy, the most giving guy, the most charismatic guy, the most intelligent guy, right? And along the line, my brother Anna Navarro, what's up, sis? Happy Easter, sis. I love you. Along the line, my brother took a turn for the worse. Y'all know the story. He got hooked on drugs. We put him in... T I put this guy personally in 30 rehabs. I paid for 40 lawyers every time this guy got locked up. I did everything. I begged him. I cried. I this tears... On my knees, I watch my mother pray every day, every single moment of the day, trying to get him off of it. And we couldn't. This is when you realize drugs is a disease. It's more powerful than the most powerful people, the most smartest people in the world. That's why I tell everybody, I never tried it because I might like it. You get it? I never tried it because I might like it. Anna Navarro out in Turks. 
I'm over here in uh, Dubai. I go to Thailand tomorrow. Shout out to Rolling Loud, man, my brother Matt Zingler. Um, not my lawyer, what's up? And so what happens is, I got the creed and I saw where the one brother was the big brother. And he schooled Michael B. Jordan and he was the man. And he went to jail, in a sense, for Michael B. Jordan. And this guy's in jail for 18 years and he's watching life unfold from behind the wall and he's watching Michael B. Jordan becoming the champion. But when they were younger, he was the king. He was the champ. So he felt like when he came out of jail, he felt like Michael B. Jordan stole his life. And anybody who's successful, that your people next to you or whatever didn't become as successful as you or wasn't as lucky as you, you can see a similarity to where they feel like should have been me. This guy got my life. And I can see where my brother would look and say, damn, man, I put Joey on. Joey's my little brother. He learned everything from me. How is he so blessed that he's a superstar, he's famous, and he's successful? Even though I've always kept, kept it 1,000% with my brother. And so it's really, really deep. Uh, you know, it's really, really deep, the movie Creed. I truly appreciated it. I thought it was really, 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 um, I mean, perfection. These guys got to win awards. I saw the movie air. I told you last time it's a good movie too. Great movie. Um, but it was deep. And uh, when you believe in actually somebody is living your life. Um, but the truth is, had Michael B. Jordan's character, Adonis, didn't work. Run up those mountains. Didn't go to the gym. Didn't listen to the trainer. Didn't stay disciplined. Didn't fall down on the floor and get back up and win. Then the success would have never happened. And so what you got to understand is. The man's a legend in his own right. He fought to get to where he was at. You can't just look at somebody and say, oh, that's my life. I should have. The man worked for that. So it was so beautiful because it was like a double edged sword where you could feel for one person and you could feel for another person. Uh, unbelievable. And so. I said morals and principles. Whatever the pain, you have to stand for something. And so morals and principles are all we live by. And so you got to stand for something. You know, and times are going to change and people are going to accept effery and things are different now. But that doesn't mean you don't stick to your morals and principles. And the thing that was so incredible about the movie was that Michael B. Jordan, he admitted to his wife when she asked him, but what happened? He said, you know, the man went to jail for me and I never wrote him a letter. I never went to see him. I never went and kept it real with him. I never called. I never found out. Ah, Lola, I love you too, baby. Wow. And so, you got to stand for something or you fall for anything. And so the man was wrong. His man went and did a bid. He didn't even keep in touch with him. Didn't write him a letter. And that pain was hurting him inside. I don't have those problems. Mm-mm. But you got to stand for something more. Free. But I don't believe in selling gifts. Just can't. And so, uh, that's one of the main things. 
D6. He looks just like the same height Ashfield. He's a mall. How could they have two guys working at two entrances of the mall, Ashfield and Amar? You cannot make this up, the little guy. I posted him on my Instagram. It's Torda. Ashfield and Amar. We took some pictures. We laughed. I mean, let me tell you something. There's another little guy in Morocco who be out there in Morocco, uh, Macaresh, not Casablanca, Macaresh, over there in Africa. And you know French Montana, he from Morocco. So one day I asked him about the little guy. He started sending me mad videos of the little guy. You got to love the little guys. You got to love them. And so got me to thinking back in the days, Jimmy's Bronx Cafe. Let me tell you something. I'm not exaggerating. Maybe, maybe this much bigger. His name was Nelson, Dominican guy, this small. And you remember I used to rock the big TS that Raul rocks? I would put it in front of him and it would look like he was looking out a building. He was that small. We put him on the table. He jumped down to the chair. He jumped down to the, like, it's unbelievable. You can't believe This guy used to work out. I heard he passed away, little Nelson. Little, little Nelson. You can't make this shit up. He was the size of a medallion. I seen it all, man. I talk about gifts, I got a rule. And sometimes, you know, Y'all know I'm a big sneaker collector. I love it more than anything. Uh, Nelson. And um, you could Google him. Uh, and I get to thinking about Virgil before he passed away. Rest in peace. Uh, he made these Louis Air Force friends and family. Certain ones. And... I was on the list. You got to be on the list. Shout out to my brother, uh, Clark Kent. Got some Air Force One that's dumb. And of course, you know, we, we're going to release ours in the summer. The TS Air Force One. Finally, everybody's going to get it at retail. They're going to be able to get it. Thank you, Nike. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Dawg. Thank you, everybody who has something to do with it. But Virgil made these sneakers, friends and family, very limited. Incredible. And I got offers, although I never sold, I, I never sell my sneakers, of up to $150,000 for this one pair of sneaker. Now, somebody offering you $150,000 for a pair of sneakers is almost like the devil is tap dancing, like the Sandman at the Apollo. You know, he's just flying, whipping around. Like, so, as much as... <laughs> 